Good morning, uh, Faizun. We are with Faizun Kamel here at Future Forward with me, Teresa Spangler, CEO of Plaza Bridge Group. And I'm thrilled to bring you um, this interview because I just find, Faizun, you're such a fascinating person and you've got such a great background. So I really want to get right into it and, and share a little bit about you. You are an award-winning fran um, franchise coach, nationally renowned uh, public speaker. In fact, you're one of the top 100, if I understand that, um, franchise coaches in the world. And um, you know, I'm very interested in how you got to that position. I think you also, if I saw this correctly, were a Stanford grad. Um, so that pathway from grad to franchise is very interesting to me. And I love the fact that you love to you know, encourage clients and to kind of embrace fear. And so I'd love to talk about some of the, the things that are in your background today. So I'm thrilled to have you. Thank you for joining us. And I just would like to kind of kick off and let you share kind of that first opening of how did this all come about, which I know is not a short story. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, I am just delighted to be here with you this morning. Thank you so much for the invite to to join you. Uh, you know, it's always a delight for me to talk to ladies like you who I may not in my daily life cross paths with necessarily. I, I love that. Yeah, I agree. To do that sort of um, intermingling of of the different worlds that we each come come from. Uh, so I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Thank you for that. You're very welcome. And, you know, I'll bring up a point. It's like, that's how innovation occurs. It doesn't occur by staying in your lane. And it occurs when we bring these diverse ideas, mindset, people together. So uh, excellent point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I, I run a company, as you can see in my background. It's called the <laughs> It's a very color. pink background. Very pink. Love you know, it. can tell what my favorite color is, can yeah. you? <laughs> uh, I started the company, Teresa, at this point about six, six and a half years ago. Okay. And prior to that, I was with a tiny, tiny company you may have heard of called Verizon. <sighs> and I was Verizon's vice president for public policy here oh. in the Washington, D.C. area where I'm located. And um, now that's know, even more fascinating to have had this switch over. So very interesting. I have been... I have been very fortunate, Teresa, mm -hmm. to have been able to play in very different worlds mm -hmm. throughout the last 20, 22 years of my career. Um, and I think it's important, and I say this particularly, Teresa, about travel. Yeah. Uh, if you have never traveled, you really don't, you really don't have a sense of how other people live in other cultures, in other settings. Oh, I think that's so important. Right. I yeah. say the same for having a very diverse career path. Mm -hmm. It's still a notion sometimes that people will say, um, you know, I have done X for the last 30 years and there's right. nothing wrong in that. But there is some sort of um, th there's some negativity uh, connected to people who may have moved around too much. Hmm. If you get yeah. Oh, you've been with this company for only three years and then you went to that company and you did right. When in fact, that that adds so much richness and depth to that individual's wholeness, if yeah. you will, as a professional. Absolutely. Um, so I was with Verizon for about eight years. Yeah. Uh, prior to that, I um, I did quite a bit of work in the international development space. Okay. And so I was um, I was setting up public health programs in Asia, Africa, and Eastern Europe at the and time. For Verizon at the time. For Verizon. Not for Verizon. This was okay. pre. This was before Verizon. Okay. Um, I used to work for the Johns Hopkins University. Oh, uh, okay. From where I had gotten my two, uh, the first two masters. Yeah. In public policy and my MBA, and I, I ended up in that world. It came very naturally to me. I had grown up in different countries. I spoke multiple languages, and very importantly for me, I felt it was a way to affect change. Sure. Really affect change in people's lives around the globe. Um, so I did a couple of very cool, interesting things. So uh, um, take me from like, how in the world did this come about? I mean, what sparked you as a young person to take this direction, um, even before maybe even Stanford? I mean, did you know when you went into Stanford or any of your, no? How did, so how I, did that spark happen? 
I would say the spark happened because from a very early age, um, I had always felt a need to be able to do work that did two things. Work that was professionally fulfilling, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But very importantly, work that was also personally meaningful. Mm -hmm. yes. And so in all of the different things that I did, Teresa, at the time, I felt that. Yeah, yeah. Until until another feeling came up that said, hmm, Faizun, this is good work, but this is not really the path that you've been looking for. Yeah. And yeah. I would, I would, you know, move on. So that feeling would come up in what way? How would you feel it first? I'm always interested in the emotional side that impacts the decision making because it festers somewhere in your body. It festers, it festers in your body, it festers in your psyche and your soul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, a very sort of outward manifestation of that for me, and yeah. I find this with a lot of the clients I now work with, where you take the job description that you've been given and you start building on it because you're not satisfied with what you are supposed to be doing. So you add things that, that give you that personal fulfillment. I certainly did that in every position I ever held. And I think that's such an important thing, especially some of the young people I talk to today that are young professionals who are feeling this unfulfilled part yes. of their role, um, you know, so taking on and adding your own almost special projects to impact how you feel like you can impact. And I will tell you, Teresa, I think in retrospect now, sitting where I stand, I think that is an incredibly entrepreneurial quality. Oh, absolutely. Right? People agree. don't necessarily think of it that way. I'm, a, I'm an employee. I yes. have a job. Yeah, you do. But you can still be very entrepreneurial, even within a job setting. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's so, and I've always find this fascinating because, you know, when you are in that role of entrepreneurship inside of a large, especially a large company, selling your ideas in the organization, sometimes the most difficult thing. Can you give an, a, maybe an, even an example or some tips to individuals that are out there that would love to do this, but maybe have a little fear behind that? Absolutely. So your question is, how do you get do you, encouragement? You sell, yeah. How do you bring like people around and get them to, I don't want to know if it's approved, but you're taking that, you're taking those motions. You're sort of selling yourself into the work that you're doing okay. that can do impact. Look, I will tell you in my, over the course of my career, Teresa, the people who I consider to be masters at this, right? Yeah. There's one quality. There's other qualities, but there's one quality that's that's a that's a given. And I say this to, to my clients and my partners now. Think about it for a moment. You run a business, I run a business. Ultimately, the clients that choose to work with us, do they do that because... Teresa knows what she's talking about. She's good at what she does. She's an expert in her field. Yes, to all of the above. But most importantly, they're absolutely fundamentally making a decision to work with you because that decision is an emotional decision. Yes. yes. We buy for emotional reasons. We yes. think we are making logical decisions, but we buy for emotional reasons because they like you. We work with people we like and trust and respect. Yes. You can take that same thinking plop it down in a corporate setting, your colleagues, your superiors, people who are beneath you in that corporate ladder, yeah. you are over time able to engage and create truly, and this is an overused word these days, truly be able to create relationships. Yeah. You know the people on the team, right? Well, um, I just read, so just to a point, I read this morning, Wall Street, I think it was Wall Street Journal, it was talking about how yeah, we're not, we're disengaging with the friendships inside of the business. And, you know, you don't have to be your best friends, but in some ways that was bothersome to me because I think, you know, some of my greatest friends are people that I work with in the past. So, I mean, what tips would you get? Cause you're giving some really good advice. I mean, these, these are people that are going to be really important to you potentially your entire life. I mean, I don't know that there's ever a reason to take humanity out yeah. of the workplace. Yes. At the end of the day, we're all humans. Hi, Teresa, how are you doing? You you look like you have something on your mind. Yeah. 
it takes but a moment. Yes. Um, I, I can't remember. Maybe it was Maya Angelou, somebody who said it. We've all heard this. One of my favorite. Yeah. Right? People yes. will forget what you said. Yes. They will never forget how you made them feel. Yes. These things are not, you know, Pollyanna-ish. Yes. I would say even more so now, Teresa. I agree. Aren't Good. we all seeking that in a way? Aren't we all seeking that in a way? Yeah. Um, you know, in a global context where literally it feels like every morning we wake up to some big surprise yes and not always the most positive yes. right <laughs> um where the ground literally feels like it's shifting beneath our feet yeah. every day where so many people have been laid off yeah. so many people are grappling with going into jobs where they may not necessarily yet feel safe to do that because yeah. they have families at home that they're coming back home to right. Uh, right? you have situations where because of the pandemic, mental health issues have skyrocketed, yes, right? Yeah. There, I mean, there's so many slicing and dicing to what's been happening the last two years. In that context, if you were to be able to wake up every morning and you greeted your day with a big smile and a grateful heart, because you know, it's yet another day for you to affect change yeah. because you love the work you do so much. Yeah. Contrast that to the alarm goes off and you turn it off and you don't want to get up because getting up means you're starting another day that you're not looking forward to uh -huh. working with people that you don't really care for night and day. And that energy that you carry throughout the day, yeah. you don't just confine it to your work life. It spills <laughs> over into the rest of your life, into your personal life. Right. And I guess too, those are the things that or start to impact your choice making it's like if you are feeling that way every day and you can't see how you can change it then it's telling you to make a change yourself in your own life 100 percent, 100 percent. yes so from did, so when talked about the jump from where to going into franchise which i find fascinating it's a uh, i find it fascinating <laughs> i you know, for me, I would say when I left Verizon, yeah, my driving force, Teresa, uh, I realize this now. I certainly wasn't this articulate then as I was going through the process, right? Which is important for young people to also understand, right? Absolutely. Um, because the process is never, in retrospect, I can lay everything out for you beautifully. But <laughs> while I'm going, right. not so much, right? Um, but as I look back on it, my driving force, Teresa, I realized very quickly, I wasn't the greatest employee. I'm not born to be an employee. Mm -hmm. That is not my space. I, I don't play in my zone of genius. Right. And very quickly figured out that I have been entrepreneurial all my life. I just didn't label it as such. Yeah. And so the next step for me became, well, then what am I going to do? So one thing led to another and I found this amazing world of franchises. But in the final analysis, Teresa, it's not even about franchises, my friend. Yeah. For me, it's about being able to live life on my own terms. Right. Whatever those terms might be. And your terms are going to be very different from mine and from somebody else's. Yeah. Um, and having done all of these different, really cool, impactful things over my career, I was finally at a point in my life where we had a young child. Mm -hmm. uh, under the age of 16 months, you know, very sort of real things. Uh, we needed health insurance. So do I go back to corporate America so that I could get yeah. that health insurance? Yeah. I have to weigh that against, against the deeper, more compelling need I had of being able to wake up in the morning with a happy heart Yeah, and yeah. in a long time. Right, right. Um. Uh, so I think those are the kinds of, you talked a little bit about being very conscious about making the choices we make. Right. Uh, we don't understand that the choices we make today absolutely shape your life in the next year, two years, three years. Yes. Yeah. Well, so you started your own business. How, how did you discover the franchise world? Because it is, a, it, one, I think it's a hugely complex world. Um, I now imagine everything that you had learned and your policy life and working for Verizon helped you with this, but how did franchise start to be the thing that was your, you're going to stick your stake in and say, this is it. Uh, goes back again to what I just said, the ability to live life on my terms. But fr the franchise world 
itself, right? The franchise world itself showed me something that I had never seen before. Interesting. That while in this country, we talk about living the American dream. Yeah. And in fact, almost every corporate employee that I knew was living more of a, the American nightmare. Right. Right. And so right. then I find the world of franchises and here you have these astonishing business models, Teresa. Yeah. If you, once you found your fit, it was a fit with your skill set. It was a fit with your personality and the brand was looking for somebody like you. Once the two came together, clients took off. Yeah. Like nothing before. And I said to myself, this is absolutely astonishing. And the more I delved into it, the more excited I became. And I said, oh my gosh, what if somebody had shown me this world 10 years ago? Oh, interesting. I yeah, absolutely. Was thinking in my head. And so for me, the the love affair with the world of franchising was very fast. It didn't take a long time. And the more I looked at it, the more I said, wow, this is, and by the way, this is not smoke and mirrors. Yeah. This yeah. is not an MLM. This is not, you know, some people make money and most of the people do not. It's not that. These are legitimate, robust business models. Right. Uh, many of the of the partners that I work with today are global, global names, are household yeah. names in this country. Yeah. Uh, legitimate brands, right, that have changed the trajectory of millions of people's lives. Sure. And so there's something so incredibly inspirational to be able to work with brands like that and to be able to place my clients uh, into that into that same business. So how do you how do your clients find you and what are those things that you help them do? Absolutely. Great question. Um, at our company, we have now become a full service franchise consulting and development firm. Here's what that means. Okay. So we just do two things for our clients. The first group of clients are typically former corporate executives like me. Okay, yeah. Either may have gotten laid off or they're looking for an opportunity beyond corporate. And for those clients, um, we help them through this proprietary educational process that we have and the partnership we have at this point with over 600 different franchise brands. Wow. We help clients find what I call your perfect fit franchise. Yeah. So what's Teresa good at? What are her superpowers? What are her blind spots? Oh, help what me. Are those <laughs> things, right? What are those things? Um, what are those things that when Teresa's doing them, she is in her zone. She is in a state of flow. Mm. Want to know what those things are? Conversely, what are those things that Teresa would say, my God, by Zoom, I would pay you so much money to go do them because I don't want to touch it. Yeah. Right? want to know what those skill sets, what those interests are. Right. And there's a whole lot more, obviously, that goes into this process. But we take you through this process. We introduce you after we've gotten a sense of who you are to a handful of brands that we believe hold the greatest probability of success for you. So you we're then, a matchmaker, yeah. you're a matchmaker for entrepreneurs looking for a business. Yeah. 100%. Right. So that's that's sort of that first group of clients we right. work and that work we call franchise consulting. The second piece of the work, if you think of it, sort of the opposite end of the spectrum is franchise development. And the clients here are completely different. They're business owners, successful business owners who have brought their business to a certain point where they're saying, I want to grow this even more. Yeah. I know what an amazing business I have, but honestly, I just simply don't have any more of the money to put into it. I have exhausted my personal resources and it's just been me and I can't do it anymore, but yeah. I want to grow. Those businesses are excellent clients who we then take their existing business. We put a foundation, we put a framework around it and we take your existing business and turn you into a national franchise brand. That's and then so if someone tomorrow, has interest and they believe that they want to put those things you know out there as a franchise and to I'm sorry I'm dinging I should have turned that off but um that oh how interesting so those people could come to you and talk about different kinds of growth strategies than maybe they were ever thinking about the I will tell you one of the biggest things uh in this piece of the work that we do that I find most people don't even know 
that franchising is one of the most robust scaling strategies that there are. Because well, most so, people are thinking, yeah. I'm going to go to the bank and try and get another loan. I'm yeah. going to do this. I'm going to do that. In their minds, that is the extent of the scaling options that they have. So I, I and this could be just misinformation on my side. I always thought franchising your business, though, was somewhat expensive and that you at least we're looking at a hundred thousand dollar investment to actually get the legal work and all the things necessary um in play is that the case or Th that that isn't the case okay uh, that isn't the case we you know we have a model that i think is it's a flexible model and it works with our clients uh, based on where they are at their point, at the point in their business. Yeah. Um, there are a number of factors that go into the fees that we charge our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 one of which is how long has your business been running? Right. And how complex are your current operations? Right. Because we need to take account of a lot of that because we, there's so much that we are putting into place for you. Um, but no, I mean, if, if there's that fear that people yeah. are thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to cost me an arm and a leg. I would say, set that thought aside and at least have a conversation. And explore it. And so is there a perfect type of business or perfect, um, you know, circumstances inside the business that make it really ripe for being a franchise? So I get asked this question all the time, Teresa, mm -hmm. uh, the, the very easy answer and the great answer is no. There is not one type of business that can be franchised. Many people will say, well, I don't have a food business because they're thinking McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, well, you don't have to have a food business. Um, there is, if you can imagine it, it is probably already a franchise, Teresa. Uh, this is how okay. rich the industry is. I'll, I'll give you a couple examples. In the last month, um, a couple of the clients that we have started working with, um, one client has an amazing uh, networking, masterminding business, creating creating these networks for um, women of color entrepreneurs to come together to uh -huh. share resources, etc. Yeah. Now we are helping her figure out how to monetize this business and take it national. She's already had a huge amount of success in that. Um, a second client, uh, he has. Um, a residential and commercial carpet cleaning business. Interesting. All he does. Yeah. So you know, it it runs it runs the gamut. If you can imagine it, it can probably be franchised. But then it becomes a one on one conversation. Yeah. To out, okay, where are you? What do your financials look like? Such and such. Yeah. You know, I can see the passion that you have for the business just in the way that you talk about it. When it makes me excited to like. <laughs> I should explore this. <laughs> I love it. It's very good. So what's the, who was, I guess, the most influential mentor in your life as a young, as a young, you know, girl? That is so easy. Um, that would be my father. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, uh, you know, again, I think as, forget entrepreneurs, yeah. as children, th those, those are our earliest, most significant role models, good yeah. or bad good or bad right, right. and go either way and it, it's for me he certainly was uh has always been continues to be my biggest champion yeah. um in you know in a in a world where i think still for women particularly when you tell friends and family you are leaving the safety perceived yeah. safety of corporate america yeah. and you're gonna go start your own business you are met with a why yeah yeah, that's risky. Why would you do that? Yeah. Uh, in that world, and it certainly happened to me, he had always been my staunchest supporter saying, yeah. if you've thought this through, uh, take a go. I mean, there's no surety. There's no, you know, there's no assurances in life. In anything. Right. In anything. Absolutely. Um, but if your heart says this is the path you want to be on and you think that this is going to be a success, take a shot. Yeah. And so absolutely, it would have to be my dad. Well, so if looking at today, I mean, there's so much bad news and there's so much uncertainty, you know, looking at the world that you're living in and what, what, I guess, tips would you give to individuals out here saying, I would love to make a change, but, and I want to grow my business, but I'm really afraid of taking those steps today. It's so uncertain. Absolutely. Um, 
I think perhaps really the biggest uh, thing I can share, Teresa, is very simply, you have got to believe that you are the best investment you mm. will ever make in your life. Yeah. So what do I mean when I say investment? Invest in yourself, whether it's continuing education, whether it's opening yourself up to new opportunities, as fundamental as believing in yourself is an yeah. investment, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Be, be able to do that because if you don't believe in yourself, why would anybody else? So that goes, you know, in my book, all, all That I Am, Now That I Know, I talk about imposter syndrome, which mm -hmm. I grew up with, right? So how, I mean, you have tips, especially for women, right? We, we battle this thing where we might be afraid to step into a role because we don't believe we can do it. And not all not all gender by you know basis, but sometimes men just step into the role. That's right. Is there any advice you would give to those that are sitting there going, but I don't have the experience or, you know, I don't know that I can do that. Absolutely. Um, again, I think in the world we live in, we like to come up with names for everything, Teresa. Yes, we I call agree. this imposter syndrome. Um, I will say this. And Certainly, I think women in general compared to men experience this more, if you will. Yes. Uh, at the end of the day, and this this came to me, um, this came to me when my husband and I attended one of Tony Robbins' um, signature <sighs> programs. Yes, where you walk through the burning coals. Yeah, my friend, it is truly mind over matter. Yeah. Because when I was walking across those coals, did I not feel any heat under the soles of my feet? I sure did. Yeah. But my mind said, oh, no, Faizun, you're going to keep walking and you're going to keep walking till you get to the other end. Yeah. What does that have to do with imposter syndrome? It means this. You have a new position. You have a higher position, a higher paying position, a higher a position that gives you more opportunities. You want to apply for that, but you're scared. Apply. Do what is in within your power to do. The decision of whether you're going to be accepted or not, that's not in your hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you start in a new job and you're like, oh my God, people will find out. I, I really don't know what the heck I'm doing. Guess what? Take stock, look around you. You will always find allies. Find people who you can say, Teresa, I'm a little confused with this. Do you have five minutes? Could you mm -hmm. kind of walk me through this? We underestimate how helpful other people are. So that goes to that networking and connecting with Is that people. It? Is and that I, it? you know, so I, I, you know, again, in talking to um, a number of people, it, it feels like, uh, and this may be, you know, a self-imposed problem, feels harder today, especially with COVID and Zoom. Any tips or organizations that you would have or strategies that you would tell people, you just get out. Just get out and meet anybody. I mean, look, there are 101 networking organizations now. Right. right. So depending on what industry you sit in, whatever position or industry or role you fit in, find groups that have people like that. Yeah. Another piece I would say, maybe don't even do that. Yeah. Find groups that have nobody who looks like you. And yeah. go join, right. Or create um, your own. Or create your own if that's what you want to do. Um, look, I think that we, we, we knock zoom so much these days because we've used it so much, yeah. but think of when the pandemic started, what would have happened if we had not had zoom? No, I agree. Totally. Zoom right now. Right. I, I didn't have to get in my car this morning and drive somewhere to come meet you yeah. I'm sitting here at my dining table. So I think there, there's so much, we sometimes, Teresa, I think in this country, we suffer from the disease of having too much. Yes. We have so much at our hands, right? At our fingertips. Um, there are ways to connect with people. You, you can still meet with people in person. Yeah. Mask on, go meet in a park somewhere, go sit yeah. outside. You don't have to be inside if that makes you uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, it, it goes back again to, you must always have agency over your own life. Right, right. Particularly in a world where, you turn on the news and it feels like you have none. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It becomes yeah. that much more imperative that you, you inculcate those values in yourself to say, no, yeah, yeah. sure. It isn't great. Yeah. And my life and my career may not be exactly where I need it to be, but guess what? 
today's the day for me to take one tiny step. Yeah. What can I do? Well, you know, let me reach out to this lady, Teresa. I love the work she's doing. I wonder if she would give me 15 minutes of her time. What is the worst you would ever say to me if I reached out to you on LinkedIn? Yeah, so sorry if I point. don't have time. Absolutely. Keep it moving, yeah. right? So little simple things. It doesn't have to be big, huge. Uh, we are capable of change and that capability is always in our hands, my friend. So you mentioned in this country a couple of times and, and I so agree that traveling broadly as if you can, not everyone has that ability. In fact, you can connect with people all over the world using Absolutely. video, but I, you know, the importance of our culture versus what are you seeing in other cultures? Cause there are some cultures where I've been, you know, I've traveled to India and there's a six-year-old making a belt and selling it on the street corner with his parents beside him making things. And it's like, it's just a mindset of to survive, I'm going to make something. And yeah, what do you see around the world today that gives you hope? I think it's wherever you travel, there's good and bad. Um, I am, I wake up every morning deeply grateful for the fact that you know the country that I have adopted as my own here yes. yeah I wake up in a country where it doesn't matter what I look like it doesn't matter what my accent is yeah it doesn't matter what my name my religion my whatever is I can step into the world and I can actually do work that fulfills me and yeah. provides value to others I'm not being stymied in any way right that is not the case in, in everywhere yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a, a huge point. thing for which I'm just deeply grateful every day. Yeah. That said, are there other not so nice things about the country we live in? 100%. So I think that the point is, and this is the way I am built. I get that everybody is not built this way. Ever since I have been a little girl, my focus has always been on focusing on the positives. Mm -hmm. negatives particularly if they're negatives that I don't have any control over I like not to obsess over that yeah so you know a few weeks ago a few months ago when we had everybody losing their minds over how gas prices had gone up yeah right yeah. well that my friend is a luxury for a lot of people right that's a good um, point when you cannot put food on your table when the only thing you can give your children is a meal from McDonald's because you don't have the money for proper food. Again, keeping things in context, we are blessed and beyond lucky, yeah. most of us. This is not to say that there are not people who are struggling in the country, absolutely not. But we have so much, right? so much we can do with whatever we have that for me, it's always, I like to focus on the things that I can control. Yeah. On the ones that I cannot, I set it to the side. I'm not being an ostrich and saying I don't see that, but I'm saying what is my, what is the value of my time in obsessing over things that I cannot change, in keeping to keeping talking about it, in criticizing things, in engaging with other people because, and the other thing you'll find about me, I'm a big believer in energy. Yeah, right. I, think, I agree. Who yeah. do you choose to associate with? That yeah. is very important. Yeah. Are they are they helping you look forward? Or are they keeping you stuck? Worse yet, are they making you look back? Be, you know, these things again are important, it goes hand in hand with having agency over your life. I think. Right. Okay. Well, you know, and you work with so many different business owners and entrepreneurs, which in this anxious kind of world, are there any favorite or, you know, best practice anxiety and mental health? things that you're hearing that individuals are doing today to help them keep that stress level down? Absolutely. Uh, wherever you live, there's an outside. Mm. Go walk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get some sunlight. Yeah. On your, right? If you have the ability and you have a park or woods near you, go into nature. Yeah. Nature is wonderful. Um, the pace of nature teaches us so much that we don't always have to be in this rush, rush, rush mode all the time. Yeah, Nature doesn't do that, right? Yeah. Uh, we are heading into fall. Fall, I think, is a particularly beautiful time for me. Um, I'm a big walker, in case yeah. you didn't figure yeah. that out. Yeah. Um, you know, and when, when, the, when, the, when the trees start shedding, think about this for a moment. 
the work of the leaves, it's done. And the tree is now shedding its dead weight. Yeah. So that it can prepare itself for the new growth that is coming. Why can't we think like that? Yeah. yeah. So whatever that dead weight is, right? Mistaken beliefs, not believing in ourselves, being told by others we are not good enough, whatever, fill in the blanks, right? I right. call it dead weight. If we could shed those dead weights so that we can step forward into whatever that new growth is that yeah. that is in front of us. Yeah. Um, exercise, talk to friends, you know, all the stuff that I think we know. But most importantly, you have to invest in yourself yeah. continuously, constantly. I think that's a given, particularly in the in the world we live in today. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite things is I have a garden right outside my window and I usually close my blinds. So I just realize I look like a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to keep them open, watch my garden. Hope everyone doesn't mind that the sun is blaring right through. I love it. <laughs> so I think I want to ask you one more question and then let you share a few, you know, sort of closing tips. But I'm approached a lot of times by the people that aren't not as extroverted or outgoing or maybe even confident in themselves right now yet they have such desire. I mean, is there anything that you can share that helps the more um, quiet person be able yeah. to get out and, and do these same things, but do it in the way that feeds them? That's right. That's right. Um, as you were talking, Teresa, my gosh, of course, now I can't remember. There's a wonderful book that talks about... Um, the strengths that inherently introverts bring into the world. Yeah. I, I'm completely blanking on the name of the yeah. book. And I think that's right. And the question you ask, again, I think it's a societal thing. We are used to being in a society where the loudest, most colorful, the most garish, the most confident, yeah. the most in your face gets all the attention. Yeah, That's fine. But for those of us that are not like that or don't want to be like that, mm -hmm. does that mean we are doomed? The answer is absolutely not. Right. Based on what it is you want to do, start building your community yeah. of like-minded people, yeah. right? Uh, maybe in your circle, you should have a couple of these people, the really bold in-your-face types that kind of shove you out of your comfort zone, right? right. Hey, Teresa, right. come on now, right? Little yeah. things. Um, if you're scared of going to events or you're uncomfortable meeting strangers, little baby steps it doesn't yeah. have to be a big thing, you know, overnight. Um, but again, I think ultimately the question to ask would be, Teresa, where am I headed? What is it? What is it that I want to do? Yeah. Once you figure a path out forward, what are the things on that path? that I need to be able to accomplish. Right. Um, you know, I have never been a never been um, a member of Toastmasters. Yes. But I hear that it's a wonderful organization. Um, speaking comes very naturally to me. I think I was yes. born this way. So that's never, but I've heard really great stuff about it. So I think truly in today's world, Teresa, yeah. there is something for everyone. There's a group, there's a resource, there's a this, there's a that. You now have to do the groundwork of figuring out what your tribe looks like and then go looking for them and i love that and it's so funny you bring up toastmasters because how old is that organization and it, i don't know you know my father-in-law was always the winner of all the toastmasters speaking oh, wow. and then okay. just you know my husband and i because he was such an influence we were participants very early in our career and it did a lot and that organization wow. still exists today and and it still has lots of benefits for individuals that are afraid to get out and speak publicly or just earn, you know, you gain self-confidence. Um, if I so can I, add one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. Volunteer. Volunteer. That's There's a great one. so yes. much you can do, right? There's yeah. so many people in need that any organization would bend over backwards to have you. Yes. Volunteer. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Yeah. Two hours a week. Yeah. That act of helping another human being with no thoughts or expectations of getting anything back, Teresa, yes, yes. is an unbelievably wonderful thing. Yes. And right. if you have confidence issues or you, you know, you, you, you are not a great public speaker, something shifts when you are in that space of service. Yeah. Something else I I feel blossoms in your soul and brings it out. I agree. Uh, volunteering. I think that's a great way to get to get out there. Yeah. Excellent. 
Well, Fasin, is there any closing tips you want to leave everyone with to tackle the rest of 2022 <laughs> and going into 2023? Um, I, I would get I would guess one last thought, Teresa, and this goes in line with everything that we've been talking about. Yeah. Um, somebody super wise, not me, said this, and I'll paraphrase. Um, when the winds of change blow, you have one of two options. You can either build walls or you can build a windmill. Excellent. What you do determines what your future trajectory looks like. Yeah. And I think, Teresa, in the world we're in today, we know many people who have built walls with all of the winds of uncertainty and change around them. Yes. Walls. Yes. And by the very same token, we have also seen an incredible amount of other people who looked around and said, oh my God, the winds are so strong. I'm going to go build a windmill. Oh, yes. That is such a, I love that. I love that. Well, excellent. Well, we are going to share um, in the bio and all the info that we post your, you know, how to get in contact with you and details, but I've just so enjoyed this conversation. As and, have I. Thank you. you know, thank you're you're a, a treasure to talk with. And I love, I could probably spend hours talking to you. So. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us so on Teacher Ford. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.